there. He's on it. There's more fish in there. See that weight going back the other way? Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, we asked for it and we got it, Jason. I'm gonna pull this down. We asked for a sacrifice and we got it. You gonna boat flip him or? Uh, bring that netting. Let's see what we get him a little closer. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to see you out there. Welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you guys coming back and watching our videos. Today, we're gonna discuss sight fishing. Uh, in a recent trip to Louisiana to fish a tournament, we were sight fishing for redfish. Um, unfortunately, huh? the water was a little yeah, dingy, so what one. we did was we focused on wakes and pushes. Yeah. So today, in this how-to video, we're going to discuss sight fishing reds in dirty water, guys. So how to target on wakes and pushes, and what to do to make those redfish bite when you can't see them perfectly. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to do kind of an analysis. We're going to take one of my recent videos from Delacro, Louisiana pre-fishing for the Power Pole Redfish Tournament Series, yeah, where cool. myself and Captain Jason Johnson, the owner of Hooked Up Baits, yeah, were sight right fishing reds from a tower. Um, the water was a little bit dirty. Uh, it wasn't as clear as we had expected. We are primarily sight fishermen. So we're gonna discuss how we were able to locate and target redfish in the marsh when the water's not perfectly clear. So what you do in this situation is you fo focus on pushes and you focus on moving water. And we're going to talk about how to distinguish a mullet push from a redfish push, what a push is, and then how to target that fish as he pushes through the marsh. Uh, the fish will create a wake. And we're going to talk about how to identify a mullet wake from redfish wake, and then where to throw on that fish and how to get that fish to eat. And we're going to use some footage from that video, and it's a perfect example of seeing a fish pushing around a corner and being able to make that shot and have the lure set up for that fish as he comes to you. Push fishing is a very, very effective way to catch redfish, guys. So we're going to talk about that a little bit here. Let's jump into the video and let's look at an example of a push. And then we'll discuss a few of the items you need to target these fish, what we were using, uh, and then we'll go from there. Right there. All right, guys, so we'll stop right here. Right here where my cursor's at, what you can see is the beginning of a push. So what we've noticed here is we've noticed there are fish sitting in this area that were sitting on this bank that have pulled off of this bank. And these fish are swimming. So what we're trying to do is get this lure ahead of this fish here in the direction he's swimming so that he'll eat it. So let's watch and see what happens here. He's on it. There's more fish in there. See that weight going back the other way? All right, now if we stop here, you can see a large wake. You can see this wake is headed back to the bank. There was a small wake pushing down here, which was probably a mullet. There was a big wake that pushed back out to open water. But right here, you can see this large wake pushing to where I just cast. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, guys, so that's what a push is. What a push is, is a wake created by a fish swimming in shallow water. Uh, a wake is coming off the back dorsal fin of a redfish, off the back of his head. They've got that big rounded head, and as they swim in shallow water, they create a wake. It's no different than a boat wake, but they're pushing the water from underneath, not creating the wake from the surface like a boat does. And as you fish pushes and you learn to watch them, you can tell distinct shapes and patterns of what's causing the push. In this part of the video, it was very clear to Jason and I that a redfish was laying on that far bank. And as we moved up, that redfish moved out off the bank and created that big, large, rounded wake. What you want to look for in wakes, if you've got a tight V wake, a very tight, very small wake, and it's got a sharp point on it. Typically, that's a mullet, that's a gar, that's a bait fish. And those are very easy to distinguish once you see a couple of them and you see what's forming them. 
Our redfish push is very distinct. It is very large and, it, and it's not a V at the beginning. It's got more of a rounded shape to it because that big, round, strong head that a redfish has. And when they cruise, they're pushing that wake, that push, and that's coming off their back. The key to targeting these pushes is, is understand that as that fish is moving forward, the wake or the push is coming from about mid-body. Let's say the front third of the fish has already passed where that wake is being created. So if I throw right on that rounded wake, I'm going to spook that fish. I'm going to bomb him. We call it when you throw a lure and you hit a fish with it, we call them bombing him. So let's say the front third of the fish is traveling. The wake has started here and back. If I throw to this point, then I've messed that fish up and I've bombed that fish. You will find instances where redfish are very angry and they're feeding very aggressively and you can bomb them all day and they don't care. It's not a good practice. What you want to do is find the way that wake is going. That's an arrow. That's a direction telling you which way that fish is headed. So there's no need to throw it right at that fish's face. What you want to do is intersect his path. So you'll see that on the next one we're going to look at here is I see the fish coming around the bank and he's waking. I make my cast several seconds before he gets there. I get hung in the grass. I'm able to free it from the grass pull it back into that redfish's nose or into his path and wait for him. What he's doing is he's cruising. He's looking for bait. He's looking to spook something. So if your lure is in the path, even if you're 20 feet ahead of him as he comes around that corner, then your lure is waiting there. You don't have the splash of the lure to spook the fish. You don't have to bomb him. Nothing changes that scares that fish. The lure is sitting there waiting. The redfish comes around and when he gets close, you bump that lure. And that looks to that redfish like a spooked bait fish, a spooked prey item. Instinct's gonna take over, he's gonna hammer it. So let's watch this one here, where this redfish has come around the corner, we make our shot on him, and then let him come to the lure. This is extremely effective, guys. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. So first thing you can see here, is you can see this push come around the corner. We saw this redfish coming from way down here, y'all, and we saw him make his way around. So if you back this up, I was able to make a cast in here. I threw it in the grass. You can see right here, I was able to pull it down and bring it in front of this fish before he got there. So watch, watch what happens. Stop it in front of the fish. One twitch. Fish finds it, runs off with it. Now we're hooked up. All right, let's back that up. Let's watch that one more time. You can clearly see this wake coming around the corner. You can see the wake. Here he is. Lure's thrown in. In front of him, stop it. And now give it a quick twitch to look like it's a spook bait fish. Here we go. Turned on it. Got it. There he is. Let's watch this fight play out, y'all. Y'all look at this nine pound monster we boated. That ain't TV drag either, brother. That's a good fish. All right, so as you can see, it's a very effective way to sight fish, to locate redfish in the marsh, in the back ponds, anywhere you're at. If you've got shallow water access to mangrove flats, sand flats, whatever it is, redfish will act this way. So what I want to talk about is a few important factors in being able to fish pushes. Now, one of the most important things in fishing or sight fishing any species is polarized glasses. Uh, can you get by with cheaper glasses? Absolutely. A good polarized lens is, is very, very important. You need a good, secure, snug fitting lens. And what you want is you want a lens that covers up as much of your eyes as possible and fits as firmly to your face as possible as to not let light in. And, and what you'll find is the less light that's in, the more you can see and the better you can see those fish. Even in murky water, redfish have some tails. Their side fins, their pectoral fins, are one of the easiest things to see when you're sight fishing because the fish itself is streamlined and he's upright. Then the top of his back is a darker orange color or brownish color, depending on where you're at, or light in Florida. Um, they'll change their colors to match the water to naturally camouflage themselves. 
But those side fins, those pec fins, always lay flat when they're feeding, and they're always orange and easy to see. Even in stained water, you can see it. The way to tell a redfish is active and feeding is if those fins are out flat and he's cruising around, he's ready to eat. The way you can tell you spook one is if he ever folds them fins up beside him and tucks them in and starts swimming away, that fish is spooked, he's done. So look for those side peck fins, and remember a great pair of polarized glasses is absolutely key. Let's take a look at what I use. All right guys, so what I use is I use Red Tail Republic, and this is my favorite glass company, a uh, great, great company. The owner's an amazing guy, he's, he's a strong fisherman, he's a wonderful person, he takes care of his people, and he's got a new line out called the Alizan. And these are a larger frame lens, and you'll see what I'm talking about with wanting to cover up. This covers up all of my eyes and lets no light in. It fits to my cheeks very well, and these lenses help me sight fish reds because it doesn't let light in. So I want as much coverage as possible, and another thing you'll notice when you're sight fishing is you want a ball cap. You want a hat on, and you want a dark colored brim because a light colored brim or a not a dark brim hat will reflect light, and that reflected light can hurt your ability to see the fish. So I'll always wear a black hat when I'm sight fishing. Is it hotter in the summer? Yes. But that dark, dark hat and these big frame sunglasses reduce any light that can get in here and restrict my ability to see that redfish. So first and foremost, most important thing guys, is a good solid pair of polarized lenses. If you're not a sight fisherman, do you need a $250 pair of glasses to fish? Not necessarily, no. The primary reason we wear glasses when we fish is to protect our eyes from the sunlight. And if you're not sight fishing, you don't need the best sunglasses in the world. But keep in mind, these lenses in quality sunglasses like Red Tail Republic, not only do they help you sight fish, they help protect your eyes. And that's very important. That's why a hat's important outside of sight fishing. A hat's important to protect your eyes. Glasses, protect your eyes, and then past that, they help serve a purpose and help you see the fish and target those fish. See the wakes without a glare in windy conditions. See the fish even in stained water if you know what you're looking for and you know how to spot them. These glasses will get you there, guys. If you haven't checked out Red Tail Republic, we'll leave a link in the description below. Great company, great glasses, a lot of wonderful designs. You guys that watch the videos, you know that Corey has three or four pair of them. She's always in her Red Tail Republics. It's the first pair of sunglasses we found that she really, really loves. So you guys give them a check, give them a look out. Like I said, link below. Now the second key factor. The next important thing, guys, is tackle. You have to be able to make accurate cast. Whether you're casting a long ways or you're making a short pitch, you have to have good quality rod and reel. First, to be able to make that cast and put the hook to that fish. And secondly, be able to stop that fish. Those nine pound redfish, eight pound redfish, whether you're in North Carolina, all the way around the South Texas, redfish are That's strong. Fish. That's a powerful fish. That's why I call them marsh donkeys. They are beast mode. So what I'm using in this video is seven foot six, Shimano GLF rods. I throw spinning tackle, always have, and I'm quite certain I always will. And I find that the GLF Shimano rods, um, the Waterloo rods that we're throwing, the Laguna rods that we're throwing, these rods have, at seven foot six, they have a sensitive enough tip that I can make a pitch to a fish, yeah, and then when that. I set the hook, I've got enough backbone to be able to turn them. The main good reason shot. I throw a seven six is for distance, oh, accurate God. casting oh, at long distance. So in this situation, in this video, you don't need that seven six. A seven foot rod, even a He's six six down. rod, would serve the purpose fine, as long as you can accurately throw that rod. I prefer seven six because it's what I'm comfortable with. I've been throwing seven six for 15 years, and I feel like I'm more accurate with that rod. That length of rod for casting to waking redfish is absolutely 100% not needed. Whatever rod you feel you can accurately cast with is all you need. You do not need a special rod for sight casting waking fish. What you do need to know is a good solid reel. What I'm throwing is a Shimano Sustain 3000 loaded up with Power Pro Braid, Power Pro Braid 12 pound test. This is what I like. I feel like I'm able to make a good cast. I can make a long cast if I need to. Even with that 10, 12, and 15 pound braid, you can see in the video, I can stop a nine pound fish without it getting away from me in a tournament situation. Uh, 20 pound, 30 pound braid absolutely works perfectly. In these videos, Captain Jason Johnson is throwing 30 pound braid 
with no leader straight to the jig head and he had no problem getting bites either guys mm -hmm. so just make sure if you've got less drag oh, on oh, your reel oh, whatever you're it. throwing your bait caster spinning reel doesn't have a good strong drag up that braid a little bit so that you can turn that fish if you've got a really good strong drag like those shimano sustains do um, then you can downsize that braid a little bit to be able to make a further cast uh, i feel with 10 to 15 pound braid i can really send it if i need to if there's a wake a long ways away and i need to make a long throw i can i can launch a 16th ounce uh weedless hook with a lure on it a long ways and still catch that fish and i've still got the juice i need to turn that fish with that sustained drag which is a phenomenal drag system on those shimano reels so second thing you need to have guys is a good setup good rod good reel good braid make sure it's something you can throw accurately and make sure that if you put the wood to that eight pound tournament winning redfish you can stop him and get him to the boat without any concern of losing that fish third most important thing you need when side fishing reds throw into wakes is lures way it works on these fish guys a lot of times a big heavy lure like a quarter ounce jig head with a big full-size lure on it making a big splash is going to spook these fish now if you throw it out in front of a fish and you're throwing a five inch paddle tail on a quarter ounce jig head and you make a good cast and you swim that in front of that fish no problem at all what we were doing on this day pitching the fish that we were seeing at the last minute a delicate presentation is important so what i was throwing is a 16th ounce owner twist lock shank weighted weedless hook i'll say that again because that's a lot an owner 16th ounce shank weighted twist lock weedless hook this particular hook is three odd and i'll carry three odds and five odds depending on the lure size if i'm throwing these three and a half inch hooked up baits that three odd hook sets right in the meat where i want him and it's perfect size if i've got a five odd hook that five odd hook is going to come back a little further it's going to look a little bit too much of that tail and i'm going to lose my action so that three odd is what I'll throw on these hooked up baits. If I step up to a five inch JRZ, then I'll throw that five odd uh, hook. Second thing that I was throwing, that last fish, I was throwing a new Bugs lure. Those of you that aren't familiar with Bugs, Bugs makes amazing fishing lures out of fly tackle, fly fishing lure material, and therefore conventional fishing. This is a new lure from him called the Trout Thumper. Let me get this all out of my hand, Joe. This is a new lure from Bugs called the Trout Thumper using rabbit fur, using fly tying technology for a weedless presentation, and a small paddle tail on the back end. This thing was designed by Bugs for big trout in the wintertime. Kind of like, almost like a corky, like a corky design. A slow sink uh, with a little bit of a paddle tail, a beautiful presentation in the water, gorgeous colors. This is what I threw that uh, at that last redfish and you saw it happen, he smoked it down. They make these in several different sizes, it's a quarter ounce. Uh, I threw this in a quarter ounce because I wanted to be able to throw it a long ways. Bugs are amazing lures, but oh, yeah. I struggle a little bit throwing them a long distance when I get down into the 8th ounce, 16th ounce. So not throwing a BFS tackle, throwing super, super ultralight uh, tackle. I need to step these up a little bit. This quarter ounce threw beautifully. I had no issues with it. The redfish gobbled it up. Uh, I'm actually going to throw these a lot more this year. So remember, when you're throwing these lures... If you can't get a cast ahead of the fish and have it waiting on the fish like that last one we caught, you want something that's going to land softly. These bugs lures land very softly. A 16th ounce weedless hook will land very softly. The weight of the lure is going to get you there. Uh, the, the 16th ounce is just to help you get down. These sink very flat. They sink very slow. And they sink beautifully. And there's nothing wrong with throwing an old... Uh, completely weightless worm hook like you do in bass fishing. Those work beautifully too. If you're ultra shallow, you may not need the sink if you're throwing a big enough lure. So the third item that you definitely need, pay close attention to, is a lure with a lot of vibration. It's gonna land very softly and allow you to make accurate casts. Guys, that is a down and dirty, side fishing, waking, and pushing fish. Polarized glasses, extremely important. A good rod reel, braided line so you can turn those fish and they don't get back in the marsh and you lose them. A good lure with a soft presentation that you can cast accurately. These are all very important things, guys. The most important, most important thing when sight fishing is patience. It, you may go, you may go an hour without seeing a fish or a wake. You may not find what you want. Be patient. Move around. Look for bait. If you pull into a spot and you're not seeing mullet, you're not seeing blue crabs, you're not seeing stingrays, you're not seeing life. Get out of there. They're not there. Those fish are going to be in areas where the bait's at. Um, if you find an area and there's shrimp against the bank and you see shrimp flicking, you're in the spot. 
If you see white birds wading the shoreline, pecking at the water, you're in the right spot. One thing that I key on that everybody gets a crack out of, if I pull into an area to sight fish and I see blue crabs and stingrays, I get excited. For some reason, the finding blue crabs and stingrays makes me feel like I'm on them. And that's when I'm in Texas. Back home in Florida, it was all about mullet. If you found a school of what we called happy mullet, and those mullets seemed very carefree and they were cruising and just kind of enjoying their life, swimming around, flipping around, flopping around, I was almost always guaranteed to find redfish. Redfish will school up and swim with larger mullet. I've seen it a thousand times back home in the Panhandle of Florida and Pensacola. You will find your smaller redfish, your 18, 22 inch fish, schooled up with mullet of a similar size. So finding mullet is a very good thing if you're sight fishing. Find those schools of mullet, train your eye to pick the redfish out from the mullet, to be able to pick the weight out, wake out, to be able to see those side fins glowing with those good Red Tail Republic sunglasses, then you'll learn to find them. Here in the marsh, if I see blue crabs, I see stingrays, I really dig in. I feel like I'm in the right area. I'm not 100% sure if that's scientifically accurate. If you guys know something I don't know about that, please chime in down below and let me know. But that is something that gives me confidence. And confidence is 99% of the game, y'all. If you pull up to a spot and you don't think they're there and you're throwing a lure, you don't think they're going to bite, chances are you're going to be right. You're going to bring that into fruition and you're going to make that a reality. If I pull into a spot and I feel they're there and everything is right and I've got the lure that they're going to eat, I'll pull that flat all afternoon because I know in my heart there's a fish there. So confidence is a huge thing here, guys. Make sure you feel good about where you're at. If you don't feel good, go with your instincts. Pick up and move to the next spot until you feel like you're in the right area and then pick that spot apart. You never know when you're going to round that next corner and there's going to be a pumpkin patch of 15 eight pounders laying there waiting on you to throw that JRZ or that hooked up baits or that bugs at them guys. Anyway, thank you for everything. Sorry to turn out a how-to video on Sunday. It's been extremely windy here on the Texas coast. Uh, we're not able to get on the water this weekend. It was 30 mile an hour winds all weekend. Um, but we wanted to give you something to watch. We wanted to give you something to look at guys. Thank you again for all the love and support. We appreciate everything. Uh, we really do enjoy making these videos and we enjoy you guys reaching out to us and asking us questions. If you got any questions around side fishing, you got any questions around fishing pushes specifically, drop it down below, let me know, and I'll do my best to get you an answer, guys. We try to answer all of our comments. So if you got a question, reach down below. If you got an idea about another video or a topic around side fishing or you want to know something a little more in depth about side fishing, drop it down below. I'll do a video for it on a Wednesday, guys. Again, we appreciate everything. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Thank you for everything, everyone we met at the Godfish Expo this weekend. Uh, it was amazing meeting you guys. Thank you so much to Laguna Rods. Thank you so much to uh, Red Tail Republic. Thank you so much to Salty Heads. Uh, thank you so much to everybody. Thank you so much to 3JD, uh, Joey's Custom Baits. Thank you so much to Fish Sticks. Thank you so much to Plano. It was wonderful seeing all you guys. Uh, thank you everyone. We really appreciate it. And uh, as usual, we'll see you next time and uh, we'll see you out there. Yep. There he is guys. 29 inch, nine pound Louisiana redfish. It is five o'clock. We are struggling. We are about to call it. This fish comes swimming around the corner. You guys saw what happened from there. Uh, awesome fish. All right, here we go. Time to release this Louisiana monster. <laughs>